those days, in the land of the Arabs, there was a good and fine king, who sighed with fear before God. His name was Mardas. Hi, my name is Mardas. And he was a man of great generosity and justice. Each of the hearts he had entrusted to his efforts numbered a thousand, whether of cows, or Arab horses, or goats, or milk-giving sheep. And he freely gave milk to anyone who needed it. This righteous man had a son whose character had very little kindness in it. He was an ambitious youth named Zahab, brave, turbulent in his moods and of an evil disposition. Everyone called him Bivaras, a Pahlavi word meaning 10,000 horses, because he had 10,000 Arab horses, all with golden bridles. He spent most of his days and nights riding them, not into battles so much as to demonstrate his wealth and greatness. One day at dawn, Eblis appeared before Zahak, presenting himself as a friendly well-wisher and the youth was charmed by his conversation. Eblis said, First, I want your promise that our talk will be confidential and then I will tell you what I have to say. The young man greeted him kindly and answered, I will tell no one about anything I hear from you. Listen to my advice. No one but you should be in charge here. With a son like you, why should an old, worn-out father go on ruling for so long? Take his place. You are the person best fitted for his position. If you listen to my advice, you will be the ruler of the world. Zahak heard him out and considered his words, but the thought of shedding his father's blood troubled his heart. He said, This is wrong. Give me different advice. This is not something I can do. If you don't follow my advice, you are breaking your promise. You will stay as a wretched subject and your father will stay as a ruler. And so he led the Arab into his trap and Zahak decided to obey him. He said, Tell me how to do it. What's the best way to accomplish this? Don't make excuses now. I will take care of how it's to be done. Your head will rise in heaven like the sun. King Mardas owned a fine orchard, and he would go there in the dawn's darkness to wash his head and body and to pray. The servant who accompanied him did not bring a lamp. Eblis dug a deep pit there, and when the Arab king arrived in the orchard the next morning, he fell into the pit and broke his back. The reverend man's good fortune was at end and his life departed. Then Eblis filled the pit in with soil and went on his way.